Hi guys, welcome! In this video, we'll talk about the skills of Nidhogg, which is the new hero class coming in the patch update this December. Nidhogg is a support hero that can buff, heal, resurrect, and save her teammates from death but can also dish out magic damage that can debuff enemies. And in this guide, we'll explore her various skills to see if her support ability can compete or even outmatch a full support saint. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. To unlock the new Nidhogg hero class, you need to reach a T4 Saint job class and use a job change voucher in the hero class interface. The job change voucher can be obtained for free when you use any T4 job class to clear wire or above difficulty of either Ponabim Museum Island or Wandering the Lost Soul instance. However, you may also just spend 88 BCC to purchase a job change voucher. And if you need to purchase job change vouchers using BCC, I highly recommend getting discounted BCC from SmileOne. SmileOne is an international game top-up center which has been in business for almost a decade. They have hundreds of partnerships with game developers including that of Ragnarok Mobile so they can offer cheaper BCC and monthly premium versus in-game prices. Smile One Top Up is available in many countries across all servers and there are various payment methods you can choose from. Here in the Philippines, I can pay easily via Gcash or 7-Eleven outlets and receive the BCC instantly. Please do check out Smile One's pricing and payment methods using the link provided below. The first aspect of Nidhogg's skills that we'll look at is the offensive buffs she can give. One of her essential buff skills is Queen of Dragons, which links one teammate and treats him as Dragon Clan, increasing all their attributes by 30 points for 5 minutes. And with this S rune, it will also grant additional 1% to 30% movement speed. Aside from the additional stats, another importance of treating an ally as Dragon Clan is that most of her other buffs and passives apply only on Dragon Clan. Thus, Nidhogg players should always maintain the Queen of Dragons link on one teammate, preferably the primary DPS. If the distance between the link ally exceeds 15 meters, the link will remain but the buffs will be temporarily invalid. The link will also be retained even if the assigned teammate dies. To remove the link, you can either reparty or recast it on a different teammate. I think this skill is like a combination of Saint's Blessing, Increase Agility, Gloria, and Imposition Manus for boosting offensive stats. But Queen of Dragons will provide more attribute points compared to the sum of these four skills. When I tested the damage of the Genus character with Saint buffs, the max damage dealt by Genus on the dummy is 316 million. While with Nidhogg buffs, The max damage dealt is 351 million, which is 11% higher than with Saint buffs. Although the damage is higher, the downside is that only one teammate can benefit from the Queen of Dragons buff. For the other buff skill, we have Ragnarok, which allows Nidhogg to treat other party members within 15 meters as Dragon Clan for 6 seconds, and thus they can also benefit from Nidhogg's other buffs and passive skills. It will also change the race of affected teammates into Dragon Race, which is a unique buff not found in Saint's skill tree. Due to its short duration and long cooldown, timing this skill correctly will be crucial for granting buffs to the entire party. This will be useful in PvP both offensively and defensively as the enemy's demi-human damage increase and reductions would be useless against her whole party for 6 seconds. Ragnar can also be a self-buff which increases Nidhogg's own M-Pen by up to 20% with this S rune. Saints can also give themselves 30% M-Pen and 21% Ignore M-Def with Huddle Swings. Next, let's take a look at Nidhogg's healing ability. Life Force is her primary healing skill which restores HP for herself and Dragon Clan based on her own magic attack and int stats. It also restores one-fifth of the healing amount per second within 5 seconds, so they can get twice the initial healing amount in total. It has a cooldown of 5 seconds which can be reduced so healing can be up all the time. With this star rune, Life Force will also have 10% to 100% chance to add Kiri Elason, which is one of the valuable defensive buffs of Saints. 
Nidhogg also has alternative ways to heal teammates such as the S rune for Flower Guardian, wherein Dragon Clan entering the AoE will have their HP and SP restored by up to 2% per second. Another one is a Star Rune for Flower Salvation, which restores 20% to 50% of Dragon Clan's max HP after the buff expires. When comparing to Saint's healing power, I think Nidhogg is a clear winner as her life force's scaling is better with magic attack coupled with max HP% percent based healing with Flower Guardian and Flower of Salvation rune effects. However, an optimized Saint build with 80% bonus healing from Meditasha, Badir's Crown, and Ode of Hope can provide almost the same healing amount as that of Nidhogg's. The only thing is Colosseo needs to be spam casted whereas Life Force can offer burst healing with residual effects. Next, let's take a look at Nidhogg's defensive buffs, which will protect herself and her party from damage. First, we have Flower Guardian, which distorts the area within 2 meters around herself and Dragon Clan, forming a circular AoE on the ground that is not affected by Earth Field and Fire Rain. When she and Dragon Clan enter the circle, the final damage they receive will be reduced by up to 60% and can even restore their HP and SP by up to 2% per second with S Rune. Thus, it will serve as a team's protective barrier against all types of damage from external enemies for 8 seconds. Next, we have Nidhogg's core passive skill called Feathers, which reduces the final damage received by herself and Dragon Clan by up to 35% at max level. So, with 60% final damage reduction from Flower Guardian and 35% from max core passive, Nidhogg will definitely boost her party's capability to soak damage in battle. At level 4, Feathers will have an additional effect which converts 20% of the damage Nidhogg deals into an HP shield for her and her Dragon Clan teammates. And at max level 7, Nidhogg's skill attack and Dragon Clan's attacks can deal an additional Nightfall Streamer damage, which is Nidhogg's primary attack skill. This damage to shield conversion and the auto nightfall streamer when attacking is the reason why you can build a hybrid Nidhogg with both sustain and damage. I think even using a full support build with unlimited as weapon can generate enough shields as long as she and her dragon clan can continuously attack enemies to frequently trigger the auto nightfall streamer. Comparing the defensive buffs of Nidhogg vs. Saint, Saints have Assumptia, Angelus, Song, Safety Wall, and Light Shield for protecting the team. I think converting all these defensive skills into final damage reduction stat and the damage to shield conversion would make supporting less stressful. Nidhogg even has a chance to grant Kiri Elason while healing, which is a reliable defensive skill against physical DPS. Next, let's take a look at Nidhogg's Resurrection and Anti-Fatal Ability. Flower of Salvation is a buff that lasts for 6 seconds, wherein she and her Dragon Clan will be protected from Fatal Blow, similar to Saint's Fate Ray, but applies to more teammates including herself as long as they have the Dragon Clan mark. Another effect is it will automatically revive all dead allies, including those not in the party within a 5 meter range, restoring all their HP and SP. I think this is an overpowered skill since it's like a group Fate Prey and Resurrect with free Osiris Star card effect. To compensate, it has a 0.5 second fixed cast time, which is her only skill that has fixed cast time. It also has a pretty long cooldown of 18 seconds, which cannot be reduced, so there's still a 12 second downtime in between cast. Another skill that Nidhogg can use to revive her fallen comrades is Nightfall Redemption. This is a passive skill that will trigger upon death, restoring 100% of the HP and SP of all alive teammates and reviving all dead teammates with full HP and SP. It has a pretty short range of 5 meters, so all her teammates, regardless if Dragon Clan or not, must be at a close distance for this passive to take effect. This effect will only trigger once every 8 seconds, so a party with 2 Nidhogg members cannot abuse it. The ability to grant Fate Prey buff to the whole party, including herself, is one of the biggest advantages of Nidhogg compared to Saint. However, Flower of Salvation has a long cooldown, which is fixed. 
The Saints Fate Pray will be better in case you're using cooldown gears and you only need to babysit one party member. Lastly, let's discuss the offensive capability of Nidhogg. Nightfall Streamer is Nidhogg's only attack skill which deals AoE Dark Element magic damage to a target and the surrounding enemies within 3 meters. Aside from magic attack scaling, its damage can be boosted the more evits she has due to this star rune, and the more SP she has due to the magic dragon scale passive skill. As mentioned earlier, maxing out her Feather's core passive to level 7 will trigger an additional Nightfall streamer when attacking, doubling her damage output. Aside from dealing damage, Nightfall streamer also has a 20% chance to reduce the HP recovery effect of all enemies hit by 50% for 5 seconds. It can also reduce the target's attack, magic attack, and MDEF by up to 50% with 5 stacks of the Dragon Breath Penetration passive skill. This will really be helpful in Legend instances when the carry is a magic DPS to lower the required Ignore MDEF from 200% to 150% since this debuff is indispellable. As discussed earlier, attacking with Nightfall Streamer can convert the damage dealt into shield and it may also clear a negative effect on self and dragon clan with a divine light passive skill. In terms of offensive capability, Nidhogg clearly wins this round since aside from dealing damage that scales from magic attack, fit, and SP, Nightfall Streamer also grants indispellable debuff, damage to shield conversion, and clearance effects which synergize with her support role. Although Saints have Huddle Swings, Dark Shadow Slaughter, and Pain Release to deal damage while supporting, the damage is subpar and the passive debuffs and damage to healing conversion are not as strong. Overall, Nidhogg's skill set is really unique and I think many players will find it valuable to have her in their team. She has superior healing, group fate prey, and resurrect and synergistic debuffs to increase her party's damage output. However, Nidhogg cannot fully outmatch Saints per se, as Saints have straightforward and low cooldown support abilities that can instantly resurrect, heal, and give shield to allies without the need to cast prior buffs. Saints also have exclusive buffs and debuffs such as Aspersia, Oratia, Deny, Suffragium with Sacrifice Ode, and Cure Barrier which cannot be provided by a Nidhogg. With this in mind, I think Nidhogg and Saint are different enough that having both of them in a party would be optimal for reaching your party's objectives both in PvE and PvP. How about you guys? Do you think Nidhogg should be a staple in a party? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. All in all, I think whichever one you choose to play, I think we can all agree that we are all happy to have another support class hero to the roster. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting the red subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.